Did you find Ryan, it? I think it's the boat. Is it? I think so. You see all the stuff on top of it? <laughs> Ryan, I don't think the top cap separated like I thought it was in the picture. I don't think I'm gonna put that in there today. Take a closer look at it. See all that? Look at the flashlight. Some pretty nasty stuff right there. By the way, guys, I'm Brian from Lake Kicker Scuba and Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Excuse me a second. <coughs> if you can't tell, <coughs> I got a lot of congestion in here and the congestion I've got is not actually because I'm sick. It's because of the dive I just made. <clears throat> we just assisted with a local sea tow company to get a boat out of a boathouse that had basically burned down and there was tons of fuel and gas and oil in the waterway and even being completely wrapped up in the, the proper uh, exposure system. Um, and even using a full face mask, I inhaled a ton of gas. Now, I've already had to go to the doctor over this once, and hopefully my lungs are going to survive out of this. But I want to take a, a few minutes in this video and show you how we clean our gear anytime that you're in that much hazmat. And yes, I know I've already made this video, but I'm going to go more in depth in this video with a full face mask than with the rest of the gear. Because the rest of the gear, you've already seen how I do it. I just basically put it in my Pelican box, plenty of dome dish detergent, and I just tear up that grease and just break it up however this mask got completely saturated with fuel and uh <clears throat> yeah it's covered that looks like fog and condensation that's not that's the fuel on there and even the light if you can see see all that brown and red and stuff on there that is from the fuel that was burning in the water after we got there of course and it was just crazy uh what we had to go through to get this boat out I know you're not going to get to see much of the salvage in this video. However, I do want you to stay tuned. The full salvage will be um, on display in an upcoming episode of Deepwater Salvage for Season 4 on the Weather Channel. So definitely stay tuned for that. But that being said, you see what I've got to get washed today? I'm actually going to break this mask down piece by piece all the way down. And I'm going to show you how I scrub it clean after a hazmatic dive other than just sticking it in here and taking a toothbrush to it. All right, guys, let me start out by saying if you are not a trained technician, please do not tear your mask down like this. Take it to a trained technician to do it. Um, if you're interested in an ocean reef technician course like this, seek out your local shop that sells ocean reef and see what classes they have available. Now, typically speaking, you're only going to be able to take this class if you are part of the industry, whether you work for a store, you're an instructor or something like that. But there are a lot of classes you can take where you can get to know the mask a little bit more. And there's certain things you can do. Like if you want to change out the skirt and things like that, you can do it. But as far as breaking it down as much as I'm doing here, you'll see there's a lot of parts. There's a lot of specialty tools that we have to use. And unfortunately, you're not going to be able to get your hands on those unless you are a trained technician. But if you are a trained technician, you've not tore one down in a while, take your time. Make sure that you take everything off, make sure you don't lose any parts, and uh, make sure you don't damage anything as well. Now that we've got this thing just about to our part, let's get her washed up. All right, guys, just in case you was wondering, that's all the individual parts with the exception of the second stage valve itself. This is the valve that goes in and um, allows you to breathe and things like that. But that's all the parts that come on the ocean reef mask, at least on the space mask. But this visor is what I really want to get in here and try to get cleaned off. You can kind of see the film and stuff that's on it now. We're going to clean that off. And we're going to wash all these parts individually and then put them back together. And hopefully it'll be back in good working order. 
All right, now we're time to, uh, or it's time to start cleaning the mask. And you guys know I'm a huge, huge fan of Dome Dish Detergent. I think it's one of the best degreasers on the market. And that's exactly what I'm going to be using here. I've got a sink of hot water, and I'm just allowing those components to soak in that hot water. And I've got Dome that's kind of uh, inside it. And what that Dome is going to do is going to take any of the oil or the gas that's solidified on my equipment, and it's going to help emulsify it out, and it's going to break it down to where it can come off. Now, I am using a steel wool pad here to clean the light on any metal house. And, and speaking of metal, all those plastic parts you're seeing, I'm just using a brush or a rag to clean, but the metal parts I'm actually going to be putting into an ultrasonic cleaner and um, getting all the stuff off of it through that. It's a little bit easier to do. I don't like putting rubber or plastic into ultrasonic. I do. I, believe that it actually tears it down but as far as the other metal components they all go in an ultrasonic cleaner all the plastic are going to get hand washed just like this and of course we're going to rinse them up let them dry and we'll reassemble all right guys so now that we got all the components washed up really good we're just going to set them here for a little bit let them dry we're going to go outside really quick check on our other gear and see what we need to scrub on it and then we're going to come back and i'm actually going to put that mask back together for you and then do a little bit of testing on it just to show you that is back up in working order. Yeah, we're gonna let that soak. Look at look at all the oil that's still on there. This stuff's gonna have to soak for a little bit. Let's flip her around. Get it down in the water really good. Let that continue to soak and break up all that oil and gas. But uh but yeah, let's go back in here and put this mask back together. All right, guys, now that we got everything nice and cleaned and it's dried out, we're going to go ahead and reassemble the mask. And if you are new to being a technician for Ocean Reef, please take your time when you do this. There is a specific procedure that you need to follow or a particular order that you need to follow when you're reassembling the mask just to make sure that you don't lose any parts or you don't leave any parts out as well. Now, it's not that difficult. It's just kind of tedious. There's a lot of smaller parts that sometimes having an extra hand there can be uh, very useful as well. But you want to make sure you get everything lined up make sure you don't drop anything um, and I try my best to stay directly over the workbench when I'm doing this too in case I do drop a small part it'll simply just land on the workbench but yeah as you reassemble your mask you want to make sure you test each component to make sure that it's uh, moving freely and smoothly and that it's working the way that it should and then of course once you get everything reassembled you're gonna hook up the mask breathe off of it adjust anything that needs to be adjusted and then you should be back in business all right, guys, there you go. Got it completely tore down, cleaned up, got all the gas, all the oil, all the bad hazmat off of it. Uh, got it dried out, tested it, put it back together. Last thing I got to do is fit it and make sure everything's going to fit good for me. I'll go ahead and put it on. And even on the first go, I actually got my little nose plugs perfectly placed. I am going to have to get one of them replaced because, as you can see, I am missing one. But outside of that, this mask is back up in operation. We'll need a new battery. We'll need new batteries for the light. Outside of that, I am good to go. Let's take a quick look at the rest of the gear really quick, see if all that gas and stuff's come up off of it. Yeah, I can start to see a little film around the edge here. We're still going to let this set a little bit. Like I said, we had a pretty, pretty hazmatic dive that we had to make, so I'm going to let this stuff set. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you understand why you need to take good care of your gear. Not only will it last, but think of it like this. If you take good care of your gear, your gear is going to take really good care of you underwater. And most of you guys are probably not going to be diving in hazmatic environments like we do here. But this is what we dive in. Yes, every job I tear my mask apart. Now, you guys know I do have a spare full face mask. So if it's a situation where I need to grab one and go and this one's not been cleaned yet, of course, I can grab the secondary. But um, but yeah. That's why we take good care of our gear, because at the end of the day, it'll take good care of us as well. But guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. If you got any questions or concerns on public safety diving, commercial diving, salvage diving, full face masks, dry suits, whatever, drop me a comment down below, and I'll try to help you out as quickly as I can and as best as I can. And don't forget, stay tuned. If you want to see this actual salvage, it'll be featured in an upcoming episode of Season 4 of Deepwater Salvage on the Weather Channel. So definitely stay tuned for that as well. But that's it for today, guys. I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.